Russell Crowe, it is awesome to see you, buddy. I miss seeing your face in person, man. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. What, what time is it in Australia right now? Cheers, Jimmy. Lovely to see you too, man. It's just after eight, maybe quarter past eight in the morning. Uh, are you quarantined? Uh, where are you? Are you with the fam? or are you Yeah, well, I'm in the bush, so I'm sort of uh, isolating in isolation <laughs> when this isolation thing first started. Um, where is that bit? There you go. Uh, you know, we had sort of family discussions and stuff about, you know, where people were going to be and all that, you know. And my parents are here in the bush, you know. And my dad's 84, my mum's uh, 79. And, you know, they've got the complications that come with, with age. So I just made the decision that I had to be here, you know. So, um, you know, I was talking to my boys and they kept the schools open here for quite a while. So there's a bit of confusion there about where people were going to go and all that. And then um, at the end of the day, my kids decided to isolate in Sydney. Uh, I was... Wow. You know, I was a little affronted because it's the bush. We've got the wide open spaces. You know, we've got all of these amazing things up here, right? But they were like, no, no, Dad, we've made the decision that in a pandemic, we're going to isolate in the most populous part of the country, surrounded by the areas that have the most infections. And I'm like, guys, uh, can I ask why? And my youngest one, who's just to honest said, um, Uber eats. <laughs> Uber eats. Uber eats. <laughs> Isn't that great? In a pandemic, my fatherly roles and responsibilities were, uh, passed kids over. Kids, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, what, what a year it's been, uh, an unfortunate kind of year for Australia. Describe the, vibe with the fires out there i feel so bad for for everyone over there what's the what's the vibe over there it certainly has been a bit of a run you know um where i am here in the bush we uh you know this time last year we were sort of about two years into drought so we were extremely brown and and the dams were all going down and then as we went through the winter we didn't get the rains that we were hoping for in the spring we got a little bit but but not enough um, and things just get, got hotter and hotter and hotter. So by the time, you know, um, September, October rolled around, uh, fires were already starting to burn and they started off a long way away from here. You know, they started off a couple of hundred kilometers away, but you could just see it enroaching on a daily basis, you know. Then come the end of October, I had to fly to America. I was, I was working in Wilmington. But November 12th, the fire hit here in not only just in this valley, in this piece of land, I'm looking out a window over there and I see a tree with fresh leaves on it, but that tree would have been a flame right there, you know? Um, and we were surrounded on, on three sides now, you know, but we went from that drought into that fire, you know, and that fire threat was around for months. And then when the fire threat was over, the heavens opened up in February and we had pretty much like three quarters of an annual rainfall within a few weeks. So the whole valley got closed down. Every road out was flooded. It was, it was like just one extreme to another. And then we come out of the flood, of course, into this coronavirus. So it's been just a series of, of events, you know, that, um, but, you know, uh, I think, uh, when you look back through history and you realize lots of other people and times have been way more serious than what we're dealing with, as serious as it is, you know, there's uh, ways forward, you know, you just got to keep doing your thing, Jim. Uh, you also did a great thing with, uh, with, with the rabbit uh, that I want to talk to you about. But I, uh, before we get into that, I, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter, the protests have been obviously all over the place, not only just in America, uh, but also uh, the protests of uh, they're very big in Australia as well. And um, you did a very cool thing with your team. Well, to explain for people, you know, I, I have a, a, an ownership in um, a rugby league team and what's called the NRL here in Australia. Um, the South Sydney Rabbitohs is the name of the team. It's been around since 1908. It was a foundation team, you know. Um, 
you know, within Australian culture, you know, of course, there's the, you know, Australian Aboriginals and uh, also um, many Maori people from New Zealand and, and island nations like Samoa and Tonga and Papua New Guinea. And, you know, the player base for the game of rugby league, you know, definitely has a, a majority of, um, of, of black players, you know. And um, as a club, we just asked them if they wanted to make their own statement. And so they took it upon themselves and they talked to their opponents on the night, the Gold Coast Titans, and they also talked to the referees. So before that particular round started, the entire squad, both squads and the referees and any administrative staff and stuff that were there and in the stadium, of course, the stadiums are empty at the moment. They all took uh, a knee together. And, you know, that was just a gesture of support from across the other side of, of, of the world, you know. And, um, you know, the great thing about it was that right across the board from the top of the sport through both clubs and the administrations to all the players and, and coaching staff and everything, there was 100% agreement that that's what we should be doing, you know, really? to offer support, but also to bring light to certain issues that are prevalent in, in Australia, you know. Um, we have a really negative colonial history of how we treated the indigenous culture that, that was here when um, we are, you know, cl the um, English first arrived to settle the place, you know. So there's a lot of those things that uh, are public knowledge and are discussed at certain points that just need to be fully addressed. And one of them is a thing that uh, requires a lot of focus and it's black deaths in custody. There's been an inordinate amount of Aboriginal men and women die in police custody since the early 1990s. And uh, these things um, just simply have to stop. There has to be the focus given and the seriousness given to reachieve some balance, you know, or achieve some balance for the first time in a lot of cases. Absolutely. Well, I think the picture, even just of both teams on one knee, uh, was a beautiful thing, and it uh, it did uh, send a good message. They sort of seemed to naturally. I don't think it was any plan, but it kind of formed a heart. So uh, it was a, a kind of it was a poignant moment, and I've had, you know, and the club has had nothing but absolutely positive feedback for it. You know. Good for you. Um, I, I wanted to tell you before uh, we got going in this, but I'll just say it now. You were so great as Roger Ailes, and congrats on winning the Golden Globe. Uh, cool. Crushed it. You were so good, as you always are, but that was great. And I wanted to get a message to you, let you know how much I thought, what a great performance. You were amazing. Thank you very much. You know, that was a, a hugely challenging job, and um, I kind of... Uh, you know, going into it. And the first time I did the makeup test, man, it was six hours long, you know, and I'm staring down the barrel of that job, you know, and 68 makeup applications or whatever going seriously. Yeah. You know? Also, yeah. we got to do this tomorrow again too. And the next day. And the next day, the next day. Yeah. We, we got it uh, to an efficient level. And then over time learned a lot about, you know, the best way to approach it and adapted the schedule completely around it. So I was very lucky. I was working with Blumhouse and the people that, that made that easier than it might be for me. But um, yeah, that was a seriously challenging gig. You did a great one. You did a great one. I want to talk about your new movie, Unhinged. Uh, I, I'm also a little frightened to talk to you right now because you are scary as hell in this movie. But uh, can we talk about that movie when we come back? Is that okay? Can you stick around? All good. More with Russell Crowe when we come back, everybody. Uh, I said, and it's on and on and on.